Welcome to Audio Able, an extension of our blog at Able United. We know there are a lot of resources available, and navigating them can be overwhelming. So we created this series to help you. We'll take a deeper dive into the important issues and topics affecting the disability community. We'll also get to hear from guest speakers who serve or represent individuals with varying disabilities and experts on available resources. We hope you'll spend some time with us to listen in. Now, let's get right to it. Welcome to our first episode of Audio Able. We are so excited to be discussing a very important topic today, employment. This is especially relevant because October is National Disability Employment Awareness Month. Now, if we take a little bit of a look back, this observance originally began when Congress enacted Public Law 176 declaring the first week of October as National Employee the Physically Handicapped Week. But in 1962, the word physically was removed to acknowledge the employment needs and contributions of individuals with all types of disabilities, and later on was expanded to a month-long observance referred to now as National Disability Employment Awareness Month. While we celebrate during the 31 days of October, employment is a year-round focus for organizations like the ABLE Trust. On this episode, I am joined by Vice President of External Engagement, Joey D'Souza, and board member Chip Byers, who is also a franchise owner of Rita's Italian Ice in Orlando, Florida. Thank you both for being here. Now, employment within the disability community has always been a topic of conversation, but I imagine it's gained further traction in today's world where diversity and inclusion are top of mind. Joey, from your perspective, how have you seen the employment landscape change in Florida, say over the last five years? Rachel, thanks. First of all, let me say thank you for inviting us to participate in um, your episode today. And that's a great question. I would say over the last five years, there's been a couple of different things that are really affecting Florida's employment landscape. First is really the emphasis the state is placing as well as employers are placing on credentials and alternative pathways to employment. So it's no longer just that traditional route of high school to college to university and then into work. You know, they are starting with credentials of value in high school. Um, placing more emphasis on apprenticeships, uh, other certificate programs. So a student, a young person uh, with a disability or without a disability, you know, can really make themselves workplace ready starting in high school and continue that path up through a university level if they like to. So I think that is one way that is making, that is definitely affecting people with disabilities and the employment landscape in the state of Florida because it's making them more workplace ready one, and then secondarily, it's making them attractive candidates to employers because they can get their job, they can get necessary job skills and valuable job skills at different benchmarks along their, their career path into life. The second thing that I would say is that there really has been a, and, this, and I'm going to say this is a double-edged sword for our population, but over the last five years, there's been a you know, heavy push from the business community, from the private sector on diversity, equity, and inclusion um, programs within their within their organizations, and that's a great. It's great that businesses are placing that emphasis on really diversifying their workforce to make sure that it is representative of the communities that they are living and working in. Mm-hmm. One of the things, though, like I said, it's a double edged sword for our population, is that oftentimes we are finding out that businesses and large organizations forget about people with disabilities as they have those DEI conversations. And so one of the things that the ABLE Trust does is always to make sure that organizations realize people with disabilities need to be a part of that conversation. Because when it comes down to it, disability transcends all those other minority groups. So a person with disability can be, you know, whether it's a race, ethnicity, gender, sexuality, whatever it may be, all of those other categories can also have a disability. And so it makes only sense for people with disabilities to be included in that conversation. And I think, you know, most recent numbers will show that one in four Americans have a disability. So it is one of our largest pools of population in the state or in the state, as well as a country of, you know, those disenfranchised populations. And so, you know, 
like I said, it's the job of the Able Trust and other organizations like us that are working in local communities and at state level to make sure that people with disabilities are not being forgotten and not being left behind when these important DEI conversations are occurring. And I feel like too, you know, now more than ever before, businesses are taking a harder look at the disability community to help fill talent gaps that were left open due to the pandemic. Would you agree with that? Absolutely. I think businesses at this point are looking at all alternative talent pool sources. And we've been in conversations with other groups that not deal with just with disabilities, but also with um, returning citizens, um, new immigrants to, to the state. And it's, you know, it's exciting for us that businesses are actually calling us and knocking on our door and engaging with us to say, how do we connect into this talent pool? Because they know that there's over 700,000 Floridians in the state with disabilities who are not being included in their workforce. And they really want to see, learn how to get access to them so that they can be integrated into their, you know, their businesses and allow um, everybody, you know, like I said, in those communities that they serve to have a job that is not just a job, but like a, a potentially a sustainable career where they're actually have an upward trajectory within that organization. Um, because people with disabilities have all sorts of knowledge, skills, and abilities, all sorts of degrees, and they can occupy any sort of level within an organization, just like a person without a disability. So from very entry level all the way to the C-suite. Yeah, and I think it, it's, you know, you make a great point. It, it's really so important to educate businesses and business owners about the value individuals with disabilities bring to the workplace. And Chip, you and I actually met at Family Cafe in June and we connected via LinkedIn and you're just such a valuable advocate as someone who has a disability and is also a business owner. I'd also be remiss not to point out that you exclusively employ individuals with disabilities and have such a unique perspective there. What's the one piece of advice you would give to other business owners or maybe even hiring managers when it comes to employing individuals with disabilities? So um, speaking as a business owner, I know that my fellow business owners and hiring managers are not gonna be moved by some morality argument. They aren't gonna start hiring disabled people because it's the right thing to do. They're gonna start hiring disabled people is when they realize it's profitable. So for starters, I would like to point out uh, the retention rate among disabled employees is much higher than among non-disabled employees. And in my experience, they often work harder. They worked hard to get this job. They fought against absurd adversity for just the opportunity to prove themselves. And they're not going to do anything to mess that up. Uh, secondly, I would like to mention the innovation that they bring. I mean, these are people who survive every day in a world that wasn't designed for people like them. They are constantly adapting, constantly coming up with creative solutions. They really are the world's great innovators. And I mean, we all have so many open positions right now. I mean, I look around Orlando, it's, we need workers. <laughs> desperately, uh, I mean, because of COVID and the labor shortages, it's just, it's crazy, but the labor is here and it is looking to work. So my advice is just hire these disabled people and, you know, help your business grow. So let's talk about a scenario here. Maybe someone's listening in and they're ready to either expand their current efforts or maybe take the first step in ensuring diversity and inclusion in their workplace. Joey, coming from the Able Trust, how do they even get started? So I would say, I'll be honest, the disability employment system can be difficult to navigate and difficult to learn if you're not living in it on a day to day basis. And I'll be, I mean, again, full transparency, I've been working in the field for 10 years, and I still have things that I learn on a day-to-day -day basis. So what I would say to somebody, to a business or an owner who's interested in to talent, in, to tapping into this talent pool, is to go ahead and contact Able Trust. Um, we really are positioning ourselves to help be that connector, that tour guide, so to speak, to help a business or an organization navigate that disability employment system so that you really are getting great employees and that everybody is benefiting from that. Um, 
you know, we want to help alleviate and reduce some of those fears and myths that, uh, you know, that are consistently populated among, about people with disabilities. And we know, I mean, the Able Trust understands that those myths and those fears come from that lack of knowledge. And again, we just want to be that resource to help you navigate that process and to help you build relationships with great organizations all throughout the state of Florida that have ready people with disabilities who are, you know, have the skills and the ability to join their workforce. So a business has taken all these steps, right? They've contacted Able Trust, they've, they've gotten started, and, and now it's going to be time to actually fill their open positions. And we know, right, for anyone, first-time employment can be a little bit intimidating. You don't know what to expect when it comes to an interview, then you get hired, maybe you don't get hired. How do you navigate that process um, when it, it is truly a little bit intimidating and overwhelming? Chip, what advice would you give someone? Don't go it alone. I mean, find your local center for independent living, call the ABLE Trust, vocational rehabilitation. I mean, even the most counties have a disability board. They know the good employers. I mean, the employers who were looking to hire people with disabilities, many of them have already reached out to these people and they can connect you. Use all the resources available to you. Even if you feel like, oh, well, you know, I'm, I'm a pretty independent person. I don't need a job coach. I don't need that. You do. I, I would need a job coach. You need someone to get your foot in the door, someone who understands the system. Like Joey said, the system is not easy to navigate. So that's my advice. Now, if anyone were to take anything away from our conversation today, what would you want them to remember? Joey? So I'm going to talk directly to our, our business and hiring manager audience today. And the one thing I'd, I'd want you to really take away from this is that people with disabilities have not only the desire to work, but they truly have the skills and the ability to work as well. In Florida, and I'm going to start with our young, our young people, but in Florida, students with disabilities are graduating at a rate very near, graduating high school at a rate very near the, their counterparts without disabilities. In Florida, students with disabilities are continuing their education at a post-secondary institution at increasing rates every year. So they are developing hard skill sets, soft skill sets that are making them quality and viable candidates for any business. With, and again, like I said earlier, from the entry level all the way to the C-suite. Um, I, I know, I understand that there's a lot of myths and concerns and fears, but at the Able Trust, we are there to be that tour guide and help you to understand, you know, that, that workforce of people with disabilities and to help you get connected to them. So it's not, a, it's not a risk. There's just only reward if you're willing to go and take that first step. Chip, what about you? I guess what I would say is when people hear disabled, they think medical or they think clinical. When I tell someone that I brought on a new disabled employee, the first question I always get is, oh, what's wrong with them? <laughs> you know, we as a society need to get past that. We need to stop looking at disability as like a defect and start recognizing it as a diversity. Disabled people have unique strengths. They have a unique culture, just like any other minority group. And just like any other minority group, their differences translate directly into strengths that any employer would benefit from. And for any disabled people or people with disabilities watching, you need to remember that as well. You need to remember all that you bring to a business. You need to remember your differences or strengths because it's so easy to get discouraged or to, you know, to buy into all that negativity. Stand up against that and remind employers, remind your boss. You know, we have strengths and your business is better because we are here. Truly such a pleasure to sit down with you both for our first ever audio ABLE episode. All month long, ABLE United is proudly celebrating National Disability Employment Awareness Month. 
To take advantage of the resources we discussed today, you can visit abletrust.org. Well, that's it for now. Have topics you'd like us to address? Interested in sharing a resource? Drop us a line at info at ableunited.com. Thanks for listening in, and we'll catch you next time on Audio Able.